Hi, I'm Ren. I'm Sam. I'm Tosh. And, and we're, we're the, the T-Swift, T-Swift sisters. sisters. Welcome back to the T-Swift Sisters podcast, a Taylor Swift fan podcast for Swifties, by Swifties. Before we get into this week's episode, please, please, please remember to subscribe to our podcast and give us a rating. It takes literally two seconds. Rate us whatever your heart desires. Just please do it. It's great for us analytics wise and, you know, on our end. So please, if you can, you know, just take your time out of your day to do that. So in today's episode, we're talking Taylornomics, the Eras Tour film releasing this week, What We're Wearing, and this week in Taylor Swift, her story. Here's this week's Swift Scoop. As we know, it's a big week for us Swifties as this Friday, October 13th is a very, very special day because the Eras Tour concert film comes out in theaters. I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. I can't. I can't. Are you going opening night? I am going opening night. I'm going, I think, like second showing. I love that. I think the first showing is like at 6 p.m. I'm going at, I think, 7 or 7.30, one of the two. I'm so excited. I don't really know like what to expect. The theater that I'm going to is definitely like a little more quiet and low key, kind of like off the forbidden path kind of (laughs) thing, you know? And then on top of that, like the theater that I'm actually in is a smaller theater. So okay. It's not like one that sits like a hundred people. It's it's like literally fifty people. Okay. So that's so interesting. I I wonder like what the vibe is gonna what be. The like vibe, yeah. I don't because obviously people are gonna want to trade bracelets and stuff, like hopefully, but like where are you gonna do that? Like outside? Yeah, and like the thing is, I'm not so they have like a, a, a big lobby area. And yeah, like, I don't I don't think there's going to be a lot of people going to the movies on Friday for really anything other than Taylor Swift. I'm sure they know better how they moved the premiere of what movie was it? Exorcist. I was going to say Exorcist came out last week. So maybe we'll get some Exorcist people in there. But I think it's going to be all Taylor all day, especially because it is AMC. Yeah. AMC is the one that's like hosting the whole thing anyway. So So if people wanted to go watch another movie, they'll probably avoid AMC. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, like, so everybody that I know is going to Regal. So I'm like, okay. But I I bought AMC because it's closer to my house. And like, they announced it. And I just immediately I'm I am a panic buyer. I went to AMC, I picked the best time that I could. And I purchased whatever tickets could get and I ran out of there. And then like, Literally a few minutes later, Mia, um, for those of you who don't know, she's my sister. She's often a special guest on our pod. And quick shout out, she did the episode artwork for season two. So we love that. But she was like, you should have gotten IMAX tickets because they were only $5 more. Oh. And that's it. Like AMC has IMAX theaters. But that's another reason to just watch it again. No, yeah. And I probably will watch it again. I just... I don't know. Yeah. And then I tried to make the private theater thing happen. Oh, yeah. What about that? Yeah. So the T on that is I totally could have made it work. But the T on that is that they're charging. I got in touch with AMC. We like did whatever. I got all the information. They want to charge if you rent out a theater, let's say for 50 people and 25 of those people are children and 25 are adults. All the children's tickets cost the same as the adult ticket. So if you're paying for a fifty dollar fifty person theater, you have to pay nineteen eighty nine per person, whether or not they're a child or an adult. Okay. So I was like, you know what? Like a lot of it was gonna be families. Yeah. There were gonna be kids, and like I was like, I don't feel comfortable making you guys pay the extra money so that we can have like a cute little party. We'll make it happen like another day. Dang. So they charge you basically the max that they could charge, yeah. assuming like it's all adults. But yeah. yeah. So that kind of stung. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it is still a really cool idea. And if you're like in the position where you know that amount of people, I think you can do like smallest is 30. But if you can get 30 of your friends together, that it it's, you know, that has to be the best way to see it. If you can't see it live, that has to be the second best option because you're yeah. just doing whatever you want in there whereas like now 
we're kind of in this situation. I don't know how you feel about going into it, but I'm like, I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Because Taylor, like, said on, on Instagram, she was like, dance, sing, make the friendship bracelets. Like, right. What do you think? I don't know. I was thinking that, like, are people going to be, like, singing? I'm probably not going to stand up at all, like, and dance unless, like, the people in front of me are standing up and then I can't see and then I'll stand up. Right. But I was planning on, like, you know, sitting and, like, like chair. Like, like reclining? Yeah. N- maybe not recline. Yeah, a little. I was going to, like, chair recline. dance, like, chair okay. vibe and sing mostly. But, you know, I do that anyway. Yeah. It's the dancing part and like the how much am I going to pretend I'm actually at the concert? <laughs> I wonder if the vibe is giving like road trip with your besties. You're confined to your your seat in the car. Like that's right. as much wiggle room as you get. You you make the, the dance moves that you can make and you're just singing along the whole time. I, I like that. I'm not going to like scream, I think. Like when Taylor comes out, I'm not going to be like. No, like as if she was actually there. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't think that's going to be me personally. Maybe some people, that's how they want to act in the situation. I just hope that everybody is respectful of everybody's space. You know, like some people have not had the pleasure of getting to see Taylor live. So this truly is their era's tour concert experience. And I think like as people who have gone to see it already – we should be mindful about it and just, you know, respect people that haven't been there so that they can really get the full experience. Yeah. I'll probably leave like the dance party and this the scream singing and all of that for when I watch it here at home. Me and Adrian. We have a nice little date planned for that. Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll be a little mindful of others this time around. <laughs> oh, I just hope uh, the vibes are good though. Like I hope everybody's in a good mood. Like I hope we have that what we had at the era's tour like everybody in a really excited mood the friendship bracelets like everybody just so happy I really hope that that carries like into the theater yeah yeah I get you I I feel like it will because you're going opening night like I can't imagine that you know not like hardcore fans but like if you're going opening night you're gonna kind of like go hard I feel like they're it's gonna be good vibes and they're gonna be like making bracelets and stuff. I'm not going opening night and I'm a little sad about that. But I told you that's like when I'm going to the UF game. So I have to like drive and stuff. So I'm going to go. I think it's the 19th. No, that's a Thursday. I was going to say it's a Thursday. So that that's the date then because I know it's the Thursday. So that's what I'm going. And I'm a little worried just because I'm not going opening night or like sooner that like I'm gonna go with like the people who are just like trying to just watch it and not like Have you know the vibes of it. My yeah. worry, my worry about your night, like I'm not too worried that it's not close enough to the beginning because it's it's second opening, like it's the second weekend, right? So if people, you know, were at work when the announcement came out and they couldn't panic buy tickets in one minute, like the theaters were literally full in like yeah. twenty five minutes. Their next option is gonna be the following weekend. My concern is that you're going on a Thursday. I know, on a weekday. That's what I'm sk- – like, I mean, maybe it's better. Have you? Okay, so this is what I do when I go to the movies. The entire time, like up to about an hour before I go to the movies, call me crazy, call me whatever you want. I always go back and look at the theater map to see how many people are going to be at the movie. <laughs> it's so smart. <laughs> so you can go and you can kind of check, like, how many people are going to be there. And, I mean – It might not necessarily be a bad thing if the crowd is less because I think you can definitely enjoy yourself more. Yeah, yeah. You just won't get, like, the the camaraderie of, like, you know. Everybody, like a packed theater, let's say. Yes. Interesting. See, I feel like I'd be down for it to be a little empty. Like, I'd be surprised if it was, but I would be down just because, like, like you said, like, I can go a little more ham. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I can go on a weekend, like, kind of after the fact. And it yeah, is, yeah. And watch it, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so the deal that, like, Taylor Swift made with AMC was that it wasn't allowed to hit streaming platforms until 13 weeks after it released in theaters. I don't know when, like, the last day it's going to be in theaters, but I assume it's going to be around for a while because I know she wants to make fans be able to, like, see it and have that experience so I'm, yeah. I'm thinking you know we might have more opportunities than one yeah yeah 
But that being said, what are you going to wear? I have like kind of an idea of what I'm going to wear, but I want to know what you're going to wear. I'm going to do um, the the shorts that I was originally going to wear to Eras, the like rainbow sequin shorts. The black ones, right? They're black? No, the rainbow ones. Oh, okay. They're full rainbow. You like the sparkly rainbow ones that when I was going to do the... Um, the me costume. Oh, yes. The, 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 the two-piece. Yes. yes. Fringe. Yes. So I'm going to do just the shorts because the reason why I never even wore it was because I didn't have that card, like the top, the jacket. Um, so I was going to do those shorts with like a tailor tee. Okay. like Because it's like. Like the Arrows Tour merch tee or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Like a low key tailor tee and then the shorts. Because I think it's like giving, but it's not like full on. Full okay. Out. Like it's so comfy. I get that. What are you I feel do? that. I'm doing, I think I'm going to do like the outfit that I wanted to wear for closing night, which is um, like my OG Taylor T like from Fearless Tour. I'll, I'll probably, honestly, I don't know where I put them, put the butterfly clips in my hair because I love them and they just yeah. match so well with the T. Bottoms, I'm not really sure yet because like there's only like the pants that I had originally picked for that. I'm like, that's a little too much for me. Plus I really want to wear my um, Eras jacket, the one that I made that I took to Tampa and LA. I really want to wear that. So I might just do like denim shorts or something. Like I That's also, cute. I also want to keep it kind of casual, but like it is opening night. So I'm definitely going to do like the 13 on my hands. I'm going to do my makeup, you know, I'm going to yeah. go like, I'm going to go 90%. <laughs> Which is still a lot for your 100 is like a lot. So <laughs> my 100 is like the average 200. Right. So, so I think 90 is like, you know, the average person's probably 75. I think. Right. I love it. Yeah. It's like, it's like the effort we were going to put into closing night compared to our day, but like less yes. a little. Just a little less. Yes. Cause more we comfy. Were, yeah. But when we were trying to go to closing night, we wanted to do like something that was like comfortable, casual, but still giving like excessive Taylor fan. But the most coveted item of the Eras Tour film, hello, tell us about it. So there is a Taylor Swift popcorn bucket and cup that we can get at AMC theaters. I think they also have it at Landmark theaters and Cinemark theaters in the U.S., um, so you can get a Taylor Swift popcorn bucket. Based on an article online, it says it's $14.99 with the popcorn included. And the cup is $11.99 with the drink included. So you can I really get cool merch for less than 30 Yeah, and I think they have like a combo. I think I, I believe I read that somewhere. I have like the little picture of what the prices are. And we'll share it with you guys. But I think you can get a combo for like 19 bucks or something. And it includes both. That's I'm not, awesome. I'm not 100% sure, but whatever like that picture that's circulating from AMC is, we'll go ahead and post it. It is the Eras Tour poster, basically, like the same graphic that we've seen for the last year. Yes. If you guys have been listening to this pod, you know that we're a little skeptical about it because we've seen it everywhere and every time. And it's like the only thing that's associated with the Eras Tour. We have like a love-hate relationship with it, but... Speaking for myself, I will be purchasing the popcorn and drink bucket combo. Are you going to get it? What do you think? If they still have supplies, because I feel like it, I read that it was going to be like limited supplies. And since I'm going on a Thursday, like I hope they still have. If they do, I would definitely get it just because like it's cute, you know, memorabilia from the Eras film. And like I, I wouldn't get it if it was like on her shop. Or like okay. just normal merch, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. I think yeah. I would say probably same. Also, I feel like if it was on the shop, it would be like 25 for the, the bucket and like 30 for the cup. And then and no popcorn and no drink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then like an additional 28 for shipping. Like that's how, how things be lately. But yeah, yeah. I, I will say I'm very grateful that this is like a manageable price. I'm like, okay, I can do this. Right, right. I think the popcorn buckets in Disney honestly cost more. So like, I'm, you know, I'm grateful. I am. Yeah. And, and the movies are expensive and like, th th that's not bad. Those prices are not bad. Yeah, I agree. I think like a large refillable popcorn is probably like $15, if not more. And this is like a bucket that you can actually keep. 
So right. here I'm, for I'm it. with it. I'm with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my theater has one of those like self-serve Coke icy machines. <sighs> so if I'm like, you know, in one of my breaks, I have to see how the transitions are in the movies because we're, we don't know if they're like the full time of the trans transition that we have. That's between true. Areas. Yeah. If they have them, you might catch me like sprinting out of the theater, filling up my Coke icy and going back in. Last question, Eras tour really or Eras film related, even though I know we're going to talk about it. But do you think there's going to be like any like dialogue, background, backstage stuff? Or like, is it just going to be the Eras tour concert? concert? Yeah. Okay. So that's a good question because it's, I think, the same question a lot of us have had. In my opinion, no. There's not going to be background, behind the scenes, whatever, just because we've already seen like how long the film is. So it's two hours and 48 minutes. So the typical tour is three hours and 15 minutes. So that just answers my question right now about Mm -hmm. the the transitions. They're definitely going to be like taken off. They're cut. Yeah, they're definitely cut. So here's the reason why I don't think that it's going to have the behind the scenes. I think that our our favorite Capite list is going to Capite lies on creating something additional that features all of that, whether okay. it's just like a, a DVD special, or a DVD, okay, a like limited docu series. There's been a lot of talks of like a docu series about Taylor um, on the journey of re recording all of her albums. Maybe this fits somewhere in there because 1989 and speak now happened during the Eras tour as well so like we get like those that. behind mm-hmm. the scenes footage there kind of like we did with miss americana for rep okay okay yeah so i think it's going to be its own separate thing and i think this is just going to be Eras tour concert film yeah i i'm on that boat and i think the runtime like yeah, it's, that, it's basically all the songs in the concert back to back. Yeah. I ha- okay, so I have a question for you. This is something that that I had like thought of, and then I saw it on Twitter, and I was like, okay, cool. People are thinking the same thing. We know that she recorded the she taped the Eras Tour concert film the first three nights of LA. So it went over for three consecutive nights. And, you know, what happens in film is that they just pick like the pieces that are good from each night and they mash it up and basically make the concert film. But that means that there were three options Mm -hmm. for sets of surprise songs. Do we think that it's like three different movies? Like everything's the same, but you, you have the opportunity to have a different surprise song. Like when I go on opening night at my theater, I could have... Film A oh. with these two surprise songs. And then when you go on Thursday, you have film C and you have those two surprise songs. Oh my gosh. That would be on brand. It's so mastermind. Like it's so Taylor Swift to do that. And you wouldn't know until like you're there watching it. It's the, right. And then, oh my gosh, that would make some more like that makes sense just because of everything that has different versions. Like the vinyls, the CDs, like everything. That true. And also it gives the opportunity to make even more cash, right? Because now I went on night A and then you text me and you're like, hey, what surprise songs did you get? And I'm like, I got these. And you're like, oh my God, I got these. And I'm like, wait, what? I have to go back and watch it again. So there I go spending my 1989 to watch the movie again to see what surprise songs I get. I think also what I want, uh, I need to research because I don't remember what surprise songs they had that night. And if she messed up on any, I doubt that'd be in the film. No, she didn't mess up on them. So the surprise songs that she that she did were surprise songs that she had actually originally messed up on. Okay. Inclu- not including. So our song she she did as one of those nights, but it was not a mess up. That was just like one that she did again. And everybody was like shook. It was I know for a fact it was our song. Death by a Thousand Cuts, Maroon. Okay. I don't know the others. Okay. I don't know what the others are. We'll have to like look into that more. But okay. yeah, I know for a fact that those three are like possible options. I mean, and the other option being surprise songs are cut or surprise songs. Oh, and that's what that goes into like the two hours and 48 minutes. So she cuts the whole surprise song set and just goes from... 1989 into midnights yeah 
that could actually be like three hours and 15 minutes to two hours and 48 is a big cut. It's ba- yeah, it's 30 minutes. And there's more lag. Like, I feel like 30 minutes is there's more cut than just lag time or downtime. Dang. Yeah, that might actually be a possibility. That way people aren't pissed about what surprise songs they got. And like, and it's it also- not consistent. It's not like an era's like, it's not a consistent thing. So like, it wouldn't, be, I feel like it wouldn't, it would either be what you said that it's like different versions or it's like i'm gonna cut this because it, it's different every night like it's not the era's tour era it's like it's not an era yeah and it's also something that she has with us right that's something that she has with everybody that's in the stadium on the night that she's performing whatever song she's performing for whatever meaning right it's like an intimate moment for the listeners yes Wow. We'll see. Oh, I, yeah. I want you to I want you to tell me, I think. You want me to Okay, I will. I'll let you know. I think I don't want to know what. I just want to know why you're in. Like, yes, the, it, they're in it or no, there's none. Okay, but if I do get it, do I tell you my surprise songs or we wait until you've already seen it and we talk about it on the pod? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. I don't want to know which ones they are. I just want to know like if it's in it or not. Maybe. Okay. The other thing, though, to think about it being cut is like, you know, that's also the part where she does the cool stage dive. So, like, would that be cut? Probably. Okay. The stage dive is in the trailer, though. And I can't picture that being cut. So. No, but the only way that that makes sense is if you have surprise songs because she's wearing the 1989 two piece outfit and then she puts the dress over it. So there has to be surprise songs. We'll just now, see. so now it's the question of are they the same or are they different? And I think that can be answered. That can be answered without saying what surprise songs they are. Yeah. Also, like maybe, maybe there, it'll be one from one night, one from another. I was thinking that, but I have to see. I don't know. I, I guess I have to like go back and do some research about this. If she wore the same two piece outfit each night, because then for continuity purposes, like yeah. if it's cut, she's wearing like the green dress on the guitar and then like the yellow dress on the piano, which is not a big deal. I don't think she would do it though. She wouldn't like make that change. Oh my God. I'm so nervous now. I want to know. I know now there's so much to like unpack. I'm going to be like on the edge of my seat the entire time. I'll (laughs) probably get emotional again. Um, But speaking of Eras tour and the Eras tour concert film, we did say last week we had like this whole kind of debate on whether or not um, Swift C Tavis was going to be making a red carpet appearance at the uh, premiere in LA And the only thing I will say about that is that we've come to some knowledge, and I talked about it last week on our Instagram, if you guys follow us on there, that it's just not able to happen because the Kansas City Chiefs do play Thursday night football against Denver Broncos. So they will be practicing, and, you know, it's left for us to continue just waiting for crumbs from Tavis and UFC <laughs> and like like say what you will with it. I, that's pretty much all that there is on that. But also speaking of last week's episode, we didn't win. And I really thought we had a good chance. I'm like, I'm not bum about it because, you know, I'm if I didn't win, it has to be that there was someone out there who was as dedicated, if not more dedicated to listening to the iHeartRadio app than I was. So good for them. And like, I just hope everybody has honestly an awesome time. There's been a lot of talk that that we're now re-entering the era of Taylor Swift meeting fans again, because she is rumored to be going to the premiere and Taylor Nation supposedly invited some people to go out there and Spotify and all of that stuff. So maybe, yeah, maybe we get to start meeting Taylor again. And that's awesome. And like, I'm just, I think we'll have our day. I'm not upset about it. I just know that our time is going to come when it comes. Yeah. So. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be this time, which is fine. We're yeah. working women. You know, we couldn't just fl- like. Fly we couldn't just develop a cough in, in a day. Come on. <laughs> You're right. That's why I've been working on it since last week. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it through. <laughs> so on Wednesday, they're going to be like, Renee, what, what happened to your cough? Oh, my God. I just I've been really taking care of myself. <laughs> it's I've eradicated the cough. <laughs> OK, so our second story today is also about the Eras tour, but not about the concert film. This is actually about the 
Eras Tour World Tour that's currently going on. We're in a little pause right now, but we'll start back up in November, actually in Argentina, I believe. So that's really exciting. But the Eras Tour is set to have an $80 billion impact on the global economy. The Taylornomics data estimates that in the United States alone, the Swifty economy, so that's all of us who are spending all our money on everything Taylor Swift, super guilty, super guilty, <laughs> will have an impact equal to that of at least 55 Super Bowls. That's insane. For reference, the University of Delaware Learner College of Business and Economics reported in February that in 2020, when the 49ers and the Chiefs played in Miami for the Super Bowl, the economic impact was $571 million for Miami. And in 2022, when the Rams and Bengals played in the Super Bowl, chef's kiss, LA brought in $477 million in revenue. That's one Super Bowl. So they're estimating that for each one of Taylor's U.S. shows, she's bringing in that amount of revenue of e like equal to a Super Bowl. That's insane. So wild. And that's just in the U.S. alone. So according to The Messenger, the 53 shows that already occurred here in the U.S. likely exceeded $10 billion in U.S. consumer spending. So that includes tickets, merchandise, travel, clothing, food, and drinks. We talked about it a little on this podcast. I actually think that was the week you were out, Tosh. But previous estimates were $5 billion impact. So this new like data doubles that $5 billion, says that she's bringing $10 billion to the U.S. economy alone. So now when Taylor resumes the Eras tour in November, takes it worldwide, she has 84 concert dates left to go. So we've had 53 already. Now she has 83 additional dates. And if the remaining concerts continue to bring in that, you know, amount of money, the article said Taylor Swift is targeted to generate somewhere between $55 billion to $80 billion, likely achieving the $80 billion mark. So that's $80 billion to the entire economy across the entire globe. Iconic. She continues just saving, saving mankind. It also scares me like when How one person could do that. Well, yeah, but also like when it's over, are is are is we just gonna plummet? Like, is the economy gonna just like? <laughs> I don't like. Are we gonna go into a recession or something? <laughs> they're, they're gonna be calling Taylor Swift to like the United Nations, and they're like, Miss Swift, can you please continue putting out music or going on tour because the economy literally cannot withstand it. Like without you, like it, it'll reach such an all time high that it's like, what and now? Like billion that's crazy wow that's how much people are spending on slash seeing taylor swift and like the article kind of talked about it it also includes so like let's say a family let's use my family as, as an example when we went to tampa it was me my mom my sister and my stepdad came with us and drove us so him being in the car driving us spending money on gas spending money on the food that he's eating over there all of that stuff that goes into like the revenue that she's that she's right. bringing in the economy because he's spending all of that stuff because we're at the concert. Right. It's more than just going to the concert. It's like the, everything around it, buying airline tickets, the gas to get there, the hotels, mm -hmm. the outfits, you're, you're shopping for it. Like you're buying stuff at the stadium. Uh, yeah, that's Ubers and taxis and all of that. Like, everything. I mean, it goes into any concert, but it's like, you know, multiplied for her. Yep. And the article actually talked about something pretty exciting. So Taylor is probably going to be crossing over into the billionaire category soon. So I'm surprised that she's not a billionaire already. I, I was like, going to say that. I feel like we've just like put her on such a pedestal for so long that we didn't ever really realize the impact she has now versus then. Like, I think we've started to see it in the last year, definitely, especially with all the research that we've been doing for the pod. But it was always just like Taylor Swift was our biggest celebrity. So I feel like we just automatically assumed that she was, mm -hmm. you know, up there. In June, Forbes marked Taylor's net worth at $740 million. So that was as of June 1st. They're saying as soon as this Friday, when the Heiress Tour concert film releases in theaters, she will finally cross over 
that billionaire mark because the pre-sales for this film have been 10 times higher than anything else ever shown at according to Sinmark, Sinmark there, like that movie theater chain, 10 times higher than anything they've ever shown there. Like any movie, period. Yeah. The way that she's taking every like big, I don't know how to say it, like genre of life, you know, like movies, music, football, and like owning it all now. It's insane. Next, we're going to have the Taylor Swift theme park. No, literally. And that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Count me in. <laughs> Hear me out, Taylor. Kind of like Disney World, Disneyland, you know, when you get there, there's like different areas. All of the eras have their own little land. Yes. Loverland, Repland, Folklore wow. will be like a place where you can just like go have dinner. Evermore. Chill by the like pond. Yes. Evermore, you can walk through like the willow tree or something. That's an attraction. Hire us. We're available. Oh my gosh. That's. A, that's a great idea. I wish somebody on this team was like, what's that word for it? Not a graphic designer, but kind of like somebody that's able to like mock have, up the, yeah. yeah, like the renderings for all of that. Get in touch with us if you're listening to this pod and you can. <laughs> we'll be on Shark Tank soon. <laughs> okay, so our last story today is a new featured flavor on this podcast, and it's this week in Taylor Swift. Herstory, not history. I said what I said, herstory. So we're going to be sharing some notable T-Swift memories from over the years, but the memories will be shared in day order, not year order, just because we do this podcast weekly. So we're just going to go day by day. So pay attention to the years as we read them off. Okay. I'll do the first half, Tosh, if you want to okay. do the second half. Okay. All right. So on October 9, 2014, Taylor Swift covers Vance Joy's Riptide in the Live Lounge. This is kind of interesting because this is a year before the 1989 World Tour and Vance Joy opened for Taylor. I wonder if that was like an Easter egg or she just like really liked that song and maybe her cover is kind of like what built their relationship. I don't know. You know, that song was like, I feel like, is it bad if I say a one hit wonder for Vance Joy? I mean, I think it kind of is. Okay. Because I don't really yeah. know any of his other music. I just know that one. I also didn't know the name of it until like, I wouldn't say not long ago, but like I definitely knew the song and never even knew its name for a while. <laughs> it literally says like Riptide in every other word. I don't know. I didn't know it was that. <laughs> <laughs> On October 9, 2018, Taylor Swift wins big at the AMAs. She took home Artist of the Year, Favorite Pop Album for Reputation, Favorite Female Pop Artist, and Tour of the Year for Rep Stadium Tour. Wow. I can't disagree with any of those. Rep Stadium Tour, iconic. Favorite Pop Album for 2018 being Reputation. Can't complain. I have yeah. nothing to say. Nothing to say. <laughs> On October 11th, Taylor Swift Journey to Fearless releases on DVD and Blu-ray. So Journey to Fearless was originally a three-episode production of Taylor Swift on the Fearless Tour. It features like behind the scenes, clips from the tour. It's really exciting. I actually gave it like a full watch. I had never seen it before, but I watched it before um, Era's tour to kind okay. of just, you know, relive those moments of when I went to Fearless Tour. It was amazing. You can borrow it anytime you want. I was going to say I need to, I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah, it's awesome. It it was really like I think I got emotional watching it probably. You can also rent it. I believe Amazon Prime like allows you to rent the the movie so that you don't have to purchase it, but I know I purchased okay. mine on Amazon. I think I got like a used copy for like $10. So Okay. Like you yeah. got the DVD. Mhm. Mm okay. I did get the DVD. So in our show notes of this episode, I linked it so that you guys can check it out on Amazon, see if you want to purchase it for yourself, that kind of stuff. So it was originally shown on The Hub for three nights beginning in October 22nd of 2010, but was released on Blu-ray and DVD on October 11th the following year. So that was 2011 when it came out, which is like funny because Taylor was definitely on tour for Speak Now when she decided when it to yeah, release the Journey to Fearless, but... I digress. Then we have on October 12, 2010, Back to December from Taylor's upcoming album at the time was released by Big Machine Records onto the iTunes store. That's crazy. 
I know it's crazy for like more ways than one because when I was reading about this and like finding out just things that happened this week in Taylor's of history, her story, her story. <laughs> It was like so much emphasis on the fact that Big Machine Records released it. And now, like knowing what we know now, I'm like, so whose choice was this? Did did Big Machine want to do this or did Taylor want to do this? And Big Machine was like, well, we're doing this and you have no choice. Right. T. But yeah. Yeah, T. So that's fun. I think that was like the first song that was released from Speak Now before it actually came out. Um, it's also funny that it was like on the iTunes store, like that just ages. Oh my God. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, Oh my Lanta, how much money like I spent on iTunes just like, because especially I feel like around the time of red was when I was really bad at it. A single would come out. I'd purchase the single and then like the full album would come out. So on my like iTunes music, I would have the same song like eight times over again. <laughs> Because you got it like so many different times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like a get me an iTunes gift card for Christmas girly for a long time. <laughs> um, probably for these reasons. Um, on October 12th, 2012, Papa John's announced a partnership with Taylor Swift and the Red Album. So that partnership or campaign allowed fans to purchase the Red Album and a large one topping pizza for $22. Inflation sucks. <laughs> um, Papa John's pizza boxes also featured the red album cover on them. That's so cool. Did you have a Taylor Swift Papa John's pizza box? No, I didn't even know they did that, I think. You didn't know about that? I don't think so. Dude, the marketing for, for Red Era was so everywhere. Like You used to be able to go to Walgreens and purchase a red t-shirt. I had like, they had a speaker that you could get for your phone. I had that notebooks. They had like a whole collection of Taylor Swift red album at Walgreens. And then they also had this Papa John's partnership. And I feel like I remember it just because I was really invested at the time. Papa John's used to be my favorite pizza. (laughs) And I was like, I need that. And my birthday is also kind of around the time. So Red came out October 22nd, which was when this partnership started. So it was announced on the 12th, started on the 22nd. Red came out the 22nd. My birthday's November 19th. So I decided to have like friends over for my birthday a little earlier that year. And I told my dad, like, if you're buying me pizza, the (laughs) only pizza I want is the one with Taylor Swift's face on the box. (laughs) So figure it out. If she's not on the box, I don't want it. If she's not on the box, don't even bring me the pizza. I don't want to see it. Like, it, it needs to happen. But yeah, I I don't remember if I was actually able to get the pizza box or not. But I need yeah. to look up what it looked like. I'm very interested. It's so funny because I know some people have kept the box. But like, if you're American and you eat Papa John's pizza, you got to know that stuff is so greasy. So I can't imagine wanting to keep the box after, which is why I'm not entirely sure if I had it or not, because yeah. if I did have it, I know I did not keep it because it was greasy as heck. Wow. It's actually really cool. It's like in color too. Like it's literally the album cover in color. Yeah. We'll post a picture of it so you guys can see it. But the- yeah, I mean, I would have never kept it. Like I don't, I don't think I ever got it, but like if I would have at the time, number one, my parents probably wouldn't have let me. Just keep a pizza box. You, I also would have never thought that it would be such a big deal years later. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I think I also think it's different now the way people like treasure Taylor Swift memorabilia. Yeah. Like the Taylor Swift drink that came out at Starbucks in 2021 for the Red Album. Yeah. I have my drink because it says Tay's version on it on like the actual label. And I have my cup. I washed it and like whatever, but I kept it. And back then, I don't think I would have done any of that. Although when Taylor Swift partnered with Diet Coke and they released the Diet Coke cans, I do have (gasps) one of my Diet Coke cans. Oh, you kept that? I kept one of them. Wait, when did you, what drink were you saying? For what album? The Red Taylor's version album. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the collab with Starbucks. Yeah. Okay. It was like, so it was whatever Taylor Swift orders at Starbucks, you could get it. And then it came when you get it, you know how like the Starbucks has a label on it? Yeah, yeah. It says whatever, whatever 
Taylor's version. On okay. It. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, I have to keep this. <laughs> <laughs> a few more on October 14th, 2017, Taylor Swift was seen filming the end game music video in London. Yes. Iconic. So when I saw this, I had totally forgotten that Endgame even had a music video. I was like, wait a minute. And then I was doing research and what's linked in our show notes for this episode is actually the behind the scenes of the music video. So it's Taylor and Ed Sheeran like talking about the create the creation. Oh, I remember seeing that. Yeah, it was so cute. I loved it so much. It made my heart so warm. And then I watched the video and I remembered that I had seen it before. Super fun fact, it was also partially filmed in Miami. That's what when it started, I was like, wait, she filmed in Miami. And that's when I remembered that I had like known about it but yeah she films the part with future here in miami that's so cool i know i love that too bad we were in gainesville at the time yeah what a shame barely missed her on october 15th 2014 taylor swift and a room full of kittens appeared in a commercial promoting diet coke in 1989 with a snippet of how you get the girl the best song ever i know i love that song so much i'm so excited for the taylor's version of it but i can't believe 1989 is all is nine years old that's crazy i feel like we were so Or at least we thought we were so old when 1989 came out. Like, I'm embarrassed, honestly. Yeah, look at us now. We were maybe she'll do a new a new Diet Coke commercial. That's what I was for a TV. I was thinking the same thing because I definitely feel like she's like she's not a Diet Coke hater. So I don't think she would go back to the Papa John's. You know, I think Starbucks was definitely more on brand for Red TV than Papa John's. Yeah. But I can definitely see like a Diet Coke commercial. Yeah. Also, I don't think like Papa John's could probably keep up with the orders that they'd get at this point. Who if knows she if, if Diet Coke can too, though? Like what if what, yeah. if, what if they re-release the limited edition Diet Coke cans from 2014? That would that would be, be cool. So iconic. Like those And that's more of a prop like that's probable because it's like you're just going to a place to buy it. It's not people making it feeling stressed, if that makes sense. Well, they didn't make they didn't make the I guess you're saying like because people have to make the pizza to put in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay. they're going to have a lot of orders versus like it's just, people are just going to storm target like they always do anyway yeah. <laughs> to buy whatever. That would be um, cool. I hope it happens. It would be cool. I hope it happens too just so that, you know, my my lonesome one can of Diet Coke can have a friend. A bestie. <laughs> Although like at the time, see – I I swear Taylor Swift and I are like the same people. When the Papa John's thing came out, Papa John's was like my lifeline. I was like, I love you. I love this. I love Papa John's. Diet Coke, the partnership, I was like, hello. I live, breathe, survive on Diet Coke. Now Literally. I needed to be like an awapidiate or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it might be. It's always something on brand with you, so... <laughs> maybe that will be like if taylor swift ever releases evermore at the long pond studio sessions like that goes with the green bottle of sparkling water so wow she should hire you i know i can do all of her marketing truly first the theme park now this october has always been such an iconic month for taylor swift so much happening literally through there's like almost something here from every era. That's true. And this is just one week. Next week, it gets a little crazy because we have the anniversary of Red. We have 1989 coming up. So there's definitely more Taylor Swift history in the month of October. And I'm excited to share that with you guys next week. And next week, we definitely have to like dive in on maybe like Red versus Red TV or like gearing up for, for 1989 TV that's coming out. It's going to be wild. Excited wild times and we'll have sammy back with us so you guys will have enough of just the two of us and it'll be the the little trio once again (laughs) but that pretty much wraps up this week's episode of the tea swift sisters podcast please remember to subscribe and rate our podcast and then follow us on social media for live taylor swift news updates and to play our weekly Swifty themed connections word game. Did you play last week, Todd? I played, I played, and I, I'm so good now. I love it. Yeah, did, were you yeah. able to get it? Because my sister yes. was like, "This one was so hard." And I it was, like, was I did hard. It on purpose. I, I literally said when I opened it, I was like, "This one's hard," but like I still did it. But it was harder than usual. 
Yes. So the New York Times one is ridiculously hard. Today, I just threw like I got one out of the three groups that you can get. And then I threw away my other chances because I, I literally just could not. So Ugh. I was like, okay, I have to kind of make the last one was too easy. This yeah. one, I wanted to test a little bit, you know, that's why I did like rep and then like revenge songs, you know, throw people off a little bit. Yeah, I, it because it makes you think like, where does that one go? It was good, though. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, They're really fun. And I think soon we're going to open up like a little Google form where you can make suggestions for what should be in our connections group. So you can add your own and we'll have like a little guest feature every week. But for social media, you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Tease of Sisters pod or Twitter at Tease of Sisters. I feel like we're definitely on Instagram and Twitter the most. Always chatting with you guys, always posting what we know. So just make sure you're following us there. And that's it. So thanks for savoring this week's Swift Scoop. We hope you've had your fill of all things Taylor Swift. And we'll see you next week right here on the Tiso Sisters podcast. Bye. Bye.